Southeast Fishing Guide, Mark Burgoyne, is ready to introduce the thrills of first-time saltwater silver salmon fishing to a pair of eager anglers. Fishing for silver salmon is really interesting. We got on this big, huge boat. We operate a 53-foot charter boat, which will, you know, handle comfortably up to six people. Mark said we're going to go out on a 53-foot uh, cabin cruiser, and I kind of thought, what kind of fishing boat is that? We use the boat so we can get around to the areas, obviously, where there are fish. And that's the first time I've ever been on a boat of that size. This large of a vessel makes it possible to enjoy the entire system of glacier-carved channels, canals, and bays the Ketchikan area has to offer. The ocean waters of this area are teeming with fish, but the silver, or coho salmon, is the most popular game fish in Southeast, with an average weight of about nine pounds. But Southeast anglers have been known to haul in lunkers weighing as much as 25 pounds. Some first-time anglers are able to contain the anticipation of these feisty silvers, while others just don't seem to be able to cope with the excitement. Mark was really a sly dog, and when we first went out, he said, uh, we could catch a few, a few silvers, we could catch a few crab. I make no guarantees ever. <laughs> could you use the whole herring? Oh, you can. Gear for saltwater salmon is remarkably different from freshwater tackle. Silvers, like their larger cousin, the king, feed voraciously on herring and other small species. Many Alaskan anglers swear by the herring as the best natural bait to use to land the flashy silver. And put our toothpick in there and then snug the line up. Let's, let's go up to five about. Now that'll hold it right in place? Yeah, yeah. But you have to be aware of it. Keep checking it every time you pull your line in. Look for your toothpick. Saltwater casting is also a totally different concept than freshwater. It does not consist of simply tossing the line out overhead. Alaskan fishermen use heavy-duty tackle and let the line out by hand at a steady, even over. pace. This isn't a spinning reel that you've got in your hand. <laughs> okay, you're fishing? I'm fishing. Okay. Fishing for cohos or silver salmon is just an exciting uh, activity because off the boat we have a lot of action. You got one on, Mike. He took that thing, Do I just let him run? Oh, start cranking a little bit. Just keep that tip up. That's what's important. When one of the silvers would hit, it was really exciting. It wasn't just a gentle kind of a, a nudge. They would really usually make the reel scream. Still got them. And then reeling them in was, was fun, too, because they would fight and they'd jump. You'd look out there and the, they'd leap in the water, completely out of the water, and flip around and dive back in. You feel like you're uh, fighting a fish. You see the fish. Uh, jumping in the water, and uh, that's important to be able to see what you're you're battling. Real small coho is what it is. Yeah, that's only about two, three pounds. A two-pound silver isn't even considered a worthy catch in well, these waters, crazy. where a coho can get to be a pretty crazy. chunky fella. At first, I wondered how how you were going to know whether or not uh, the fish was on your line. You, what you do is you set your drag real loose, and as soon as they come on, and just scream. Your your reel would scream. And you know you have one on. You tighten it up slowly and then bring it in. Oh, he feels. Don't tighten the drag. Don't tighten it? Don't tighten it. Not yet. I already tightened it. I'll loosen it. Yeah. I can't feel it yet, can you? He doesn't feel very big. When he first took it, I thought he was a lot He's probably swimming a lot through the bigger. Boat. Whoa. Whoa. Don't pull him out of the water. Can you see him? Still got my toothpick on. No. When sea run, silvers are at the peak of their strength and grow larger than when in fresh water. That's a big fish. I think it's Charlie the tuna. Look at Okay, that's a fairly nice fish, about eight, nine pounds. Yeah. Boy, that's a beauty. Another head for the crab pot. Yeah. <laughs> After we'd caught several salmon, uh, we were taken to a real small uh, inlet, a cove, where there were said to be crab on the bottom. Okay, you guys, let's haul them up. We're going to go over and get some crab. Uh, a lot of people that I have had out on trips in the past, you know, the crabbing is one of the highlights of the trip. Well, you saw some crabs down there, huh? <laughs> we put the crab pots down. I said, how many do, we, do you expect we'll get? He said, all, one, two, maybe. I never make any guarantees. That's what you always say. I do make one guarantee. It'll probably rain. Hey. 
Lowering crab pots into the swirling waters can be a dampening experience. Southeast cloudbursts sometimes waterlog unsuspecting visitors, making them act mildly water crazy. Can we pull them up now or what? No, uh, we'll wait about uh, two hours. Two hours? Yeah, and I think we'll go back here and maybe try to catch another salmon or two and then we'll come back. Pursuing the spunky coho salmon is a great way to pass the time while waiting for the crusty crab to wander into the pot. Hey, hey, I got another one. Oh! oh look at this pine. Whoa! Silvers are the fightinest fish around frequently leaping out of the water and strutting their scaly stuff. <laughs> oh, he, he's not ready. ready. He's he's right. The skipper now, scared him. Hey, you still got your toothpick, though. That's one Whoa. good. He's got one. Hey, that's nice. And hey! The excitement and thrill of, you know, seeing that fish in the net on the deck, uh, people, you can just see their eyes light up, and they talk about that for hours and hours. Woo, that's a coho. <laughs> Use that hook that's laying back there to grab the buoy. I'll back into it. It may seem a little strange that something funny can happen besides someone picking up a crab at the wrong end and getting pinched. You want to see the bite mark? And there are other risks involved in lowering a crab pot. But occasionally, uh, I'll come back to my crab pots and uh, I'll pull them and lo and behold, no crab, but I'll have a, a, a six-pack of beer in there. Most crabbers wouldn't swap for two six-packs. I was surprised when we pulled up the pot, the first thing that I saw was a long fish in it. And I didn't realize what it was until we got it right to the surface and I could see it had the shape of a shark. Three, two, two. The people now. are astounded that this thing really works, you know, that the, the pot is just full of crabs. See it coming? This is where you get your exercise. We do this with everybody, pull crab pots at the end of the day. A crabber can never predict what may turn up in his pot. Got another shark, too. While an eerie salmon shark lured in by the bait is carnivorous, he possesses no threat to man. We pulled those things up. The whole pot was full, and I couldn't believe it. The crabs have eaten his tail. That what looks like. Along with shark, starfish, and other sea creatures usually find their way into the pot, which often becomes a virtual treasure chest of southeastern sea life. Crab in Alaska are so plentiful, it's not hard to send the females and the little guys back home into the deep blue water. Steady there. This crusty crustacean can draw blood if he gets a hold of a careless sportsman's finger. Nice crab. Ooh, that's a nice half. Ow! Oh, Ow! Oh. Look at how he bent that thing. Now, you need a quick lesson on how to crack a crab, right? Yeah, right. Clean a crab. Right. Mark's method was just simply to break the back, knock off the shell, and pull them apart, and that's all there was to it. Within a few seconds, you had a totally cleaned, a uh, crab ready to go in the pots. Not bad. When we found a nice quiet cove uh, and it was getting to be about dusk, Mark decided we'd stay there for the night. Time to get up. You gotta be kidding. I never kid. How about breakfast, breakfast in bed? Let's, let's breakfast, miss breakfast in, bed. in bed. Hey, I'll tell you something. It doesn't yeah. make a bit of difference. Yeah. Most <laughs> fish don't have any knowledge of time or let's anything. Let's go. Like let's go. I've heard all these excuses now. In Alaska, anglers rise early, but any tendency to complain is soon forgotten as the first strike hits. I got one! Keep your tip up! Think you got something on? I think so. Silver, I haven't seen it yet. The Before the sleep has hardly left the eyes of the drowsy angler, a fully charged silver electrifies his line. Boy, when he flashed there, he looked big. That's nice and there heavy now. There he is. Oh, come to Papa. <laughs> hey! It's a whale! <laughs> Look at that! Look at that! That's beautiful! That's a monster! That thing Whoa. is a fat one! <laughs> is that the world's record? I think we ought to weigh this one. Look at that! Oh, Look at that! Got a scale right there.